As I stand on this old historic stage and look out at you all, and some of you I can see, it dawns on me that you might recognize me, maybe as Joan Cratchit, random street urchin, or schoolgirl number three. For the first three years after the Ellen reopened in 2008, I was in all of the Christmas performances. To me, it was my job, and no one could convince me otherwise. I wanted to move to New York, become a professional actor, act on Broadway, and finish the fourth grade. But it wasn't merely the acting that grabbed me. It was this theater that you are all sitting in right now. The padded walls, the cushioned seats, the creaky old staircases, and the stinky old dressing rooms right below my feet. And of course, the haunted ladies' bathroom. That's right, just in case you didn't know. It was a love of history and acting that full on grabbed me and changed my young life. Now, or should I say still, I am an avid reader, the very definition of a bookworm. I love being transported to another time, another place, another world, and often find the world I come back to a bit dull in comparison. Recently, due to high school curriculum, I've been reading more of the American classics, To Kill a Mockingbird, Huckleberry Finn, and most recently, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. This last one might not ring a bell. I never heard of it before this year. However, the story of this young slave girl was so honest and raw that I felt compelled to share her story. This is Harriet Jacobs. Slave, mother, writer, abolitionist, woman, human. Her story is one that few people know, but one that brings slavery to a tangible light. Her book, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, was the first slave narrative published by a woman after she'd escaped from the South. Harriet published her book under the pen name Linda Brent and changed all the names in her book to protect her family and friends who still remained in the South. The book covers her physical and moral battles in and out of slavery. When I first started reading this book, I had no context. I'm just going to state the obvious here. I'm a white female descended from Vikings. I was born into freedom 17 years ago. I have never had to question whether my life could be bought or sold. My life has been filled with an abundance of unconditional love, education, and adventure, all of my choosing. Harriet was born in Edenton, North Carolina during the fall of 1813. She had a happy childhood with her brother until she, her mistress and her mother died when she was 12. Shortly after her mother's death, her and her brother were sold to Dr. Norcom, Harriet specifically to his three-year-old daughter. Harriet worked in the house doing errands and tending to her infant mistress. Dr. Norcom soon became infatuated with Harriet and sought her out during the day to verbally and sexually harass her. In 1820, he was known as a respected slaveholder, but by today's standards, he would be considered nothing more than a common pedophile. Harriet's teen years were filled with conflicting moral trepidations, but she never gave in to Dr. Norcom and retained her virtue and sense of humanity. The doctor's wife grew increasingly jealous of her husband's interest in Harriet and would sometimes make Harriet sleep in the house and then watch her while she slept just to keep an eye on her. To escape the oppressive nature of her masters, Harriet sought the affections of a white family friend, hoping to deter Norcom from preying on her. Samuel Sawyer was a lawyer and later a North Carolina politician. However, even his status could not free Harriet or later her children. Harriet had two children by Sawyer, but despite this, Norcom resolved to never let her or her children go. Harriet's children were born three years apart, Joseph when she was 16 and Louisa when she was 19. Her children grew up as Norcom's property, but spent most of their childhood at their grandmother, Molly's house. They were Harriet's reason to live. Norcom used Harriet's children as leverage, threatening to sell them if she didn't have sexual relations with him. Finally, Harriet had had enough and decided to run away, but she didn't go far. In fact, she hid at friends' houses, under floorboards and in attics until a secure hiding spot could be made. Eventually, her uncle built her a cubby in her grandmother's house where she would spend the next seven years of her life. No one save her grandmother, uncle, and brother knew where she was. Everyone else, including her own children, believed that she had escaped to the North. Dr. Norcom even posted a $100 reward in the North and made several trips there himself to try to find her, eventually going bankrupt. The cubby was located above Aunt Molly's storeroom. The space was three by seven by nine feet in dimensions. There wasn't even enough room to sit up straight. Harriet had to lie down and occupy herself with thoughts and watch her children grow up through a hole in the roof. Harriet endured chiggers, pneumonia, heat stroke, frostbite, all while in her attic. Harriet was in that attic for seven years. 
That's 2,555 days and 61,320 hours. Let that sink in a bit. Eventually, a friend of Harriet secured her a spot on a ship heading north, but Harriet was reluctant to leave her children because their father had promised to emancipate them but hadn't. He even later gave his daughter to his, his sister in the north as a housemaid. Harriet decided to leave and ended up in New York where she was reunited with her brother who had escaped a few years earlier. Harriet went to work for Mrs. Willis in order to save enough money to buy her children's freedom. She worked as a nanny and even visited London with the child. A few years later, Harriet learned that Norcom had died. This allowed Mrs. Willis to purchase Harriet's freedom. Harriet was reunited with her children and they lived together in New York. Despite having escaped slavery, Harriet never stopped fighting it. Her and her daughter founded Freedmen's School for the Children of Escaped Slaves. She was an active abolitionist and published her book in 1891 to aid the abolitionist movement. Harriet chose to give back to a world that had treated her with no more importance than toilet paper. While Harriet never had a true choice in her life, what she did was always for the greater good. While I was born into freedom, what I fight for is our earth, and to conserve and protect it for the greater good. Despite being two centuries older than me, Harriet has inspired me to believe in what I do, no matter what life throws my way. In today's world, can you imagine having only one photo that encapsulated your entire life? That photo would have to capture your tears, smile, pain, joy, and every memory reflected in the gaze of your eyes. There is only one known photo of Harriet Jacobs, and this is her photo. Thank you.